Nico Klaas and the two strikers, but Kuhlmann's the man who scored the goal back in 81, featuring as well. Game on the way, and that's the Irish lineup, much as expected, with no place for Ronnie Whelan or Jim Beglin, both of whom uh, chose to go on holiday instead of on the pre-season tour to Iceland. Hewton in at left back in the midfield, featuring Paul McGrath. And I can only pity you if you're watching this match in black and white because all green and all red look terribly similar. But uh, the Irish all in green playing right to left, ever so slightly light, lighter in monochrome. Cullimans and the Cousin. And now David Lang. And Langen to seek out Frank Stapleton. Ball is out. Match officials here, Romanians. The referee, Jan Igna, had two World Cup matches in Mexico. Among them, one of them rather, the uh, Brazil-France quarter-final, which was such a splendid advertisement for the game of soccer. That's an Irish ball. Throw one by Chris Hewton, who can't find a place in the Tottenham team since the arrival of David Cleet as manager and Mitchell Thomas from Luton. But in this side, because Jim Beglin has been left out and left on the substitute bench. Galvin. And a little nudge there from Stefan de Mol. Playing a sweeper for the Belgians, who have five men at the back. Three in midfield and Desmet and Klaas in the two strikers. Galvin. Thundering challenge for Klaas. And back comes Schiefo to help out. And he did so successfully. Schiefo. And De Ball. It was doubtful for this match. He had a touch of flu, but obviously has recovered sufficiently. Frankie van der Relst and Schiefo again. Kleisters. Kulemans. Support on the left coming from Fervort. Kulemans. And a little bit of a misunderstanding there between Kevin Moran and Mark Lawrenson, but fortunately enough, Chris Hewton was alive to the danger. Aldridge for Brady. Langen. But Stable can pull him to ball to the right this time. Ray Houghton. And up goes Aldridge. Pop the winner there. McGrath and Kevin Moore. Galvin. Klaassen and Brady in and fouling Schiefo. No malice intended there, I shouldn't have thought, but uh, the ball was loose, it was anybody's. And Brady went in hard on Enzo Schiefo. Belgian side, of course, substitutes included, made up entirely of men who made the trip to Mexico and came back fourth best in the world. A great deal expected of the Belgians here in their first match after that marvelous performance in Mexico. De Ball. And Kuhlmann's on the run is offside. A free kick awarded. And with almost five minutes gone, an opportunity to call in Ray Tracy for early impressions. Well, at the moment, George, they're just teasing each other out. Um, the main danger there is big Kuhlmann's in the centre. He, he likes to go forward as a former striker. And uh, he, he gets into dangerous positions. 
it's one that we're going to have to be very aware of. Fairport and Coolermans again. And of course all Irish eyes will be on Jan Coolermans after what he did the World Cup qualifying match here in this very stadium five years ago. Not a great ball by Kleisters, Ray Houghton and Aldridge on the run. The old Oxford 1-2 operating there, Stapleton has gone into the middle. Langen now. Not quite reaching Galvin, but now McGrath for Galvin. Just a little too much weight in that, and a throw to the Belgians. George Groon wearing the number two shirt, normally filled by Eric Heritz, who's injured. He was injured in a club game in Holland. And they said about Heritz that although he wasn't officially the captain, he was captain in everything but uh, wearing the armband in Mexico. So he and the other defender, Roncam, missing through injury. The Belgian defence has been somewhat disrupted. And De Mol here. Doubts about his state of health before the game, so... Maybe there's something to be worked upon there. Frankie van der Elst. De Mol. Schifo. Read by Stapleton. Now Brady. Galvin left of him. And Houghton wants it through the middle. Short of ball to Aldridge. Showing no profit. Now it's Kleistner's. Offside. Two of them offside there. And the Romanian linesman right in line. Houghton. Run back to Jean-Marie Fapp. Good run by Desmet here. There was no one in the middle to capitalise on that, but that was great running for the Lille forward, Philippe Desmet. Timed the run superbly, was in behind the defence. But no red shirt was up to offer support. Beating Perfort. Kolomans. One back by Brady. Houghton. Crowded out. And back again to Faf. Poor ball. Elst, Kleisters, he's showing too much of the ball to the opposition and has lost possession a couple of times already. And now Grun, who scored the goal that took them to Mexico, won by Lawrence. And Brady towards Stapleton. Galvin to capitalise, Aldridge in the middle. Too close to Fapp. No bother in the end to him. Bekauteren now, Belgian bench. Among the substitutes, the vast experience there in Vanderberg. Forty catches a striker and 19 goals, the top scorer in the Belgian squad at the moment. It's the most experienced international in Irish colours, Brady. 
the one who hasn't been around so long, Paul McGrath. Schifo. The Carthery. Coleman's on the run and wants it through the middle. Lawrenson putting it out. Langen to Houghton. Their fourth read the intention. And Ireland of a throw. Open and encouraging first ten minutes. And certainly the Jack Charlton philosophy of getting the ball up early has had its impact on the tactics of the team. Little push and a free kick to Belgium. Well, last night watching the under-21s on Lockerance ground in a very creditable scoreless draw we left, musing that something similar from this encounter would be highly satisfactory. Certainly on the first 10 minutes, there's no evidence that the Irish team is affording the Belgians any more respect than 11 other footballers are actually due. Once again on the run, Moran read that perfectly. And now Schifo, who's seen a great deal of the ball, the hub of the Belgian midfield. Grun, present to Galvin, and now Brady. Houghton's gone running. Unselfish running towards the front by Houghton, not for the first time. And now Galvin from McGrath. They didn't move for Liam Brady. And encouraging signs from the terraces. Sizable Irish contingent which is on the far side as we are looking and to the right is making its presence heard. Groom for Belgium. And Langen putting it out for the first corner of the match. Safety first. Paddy Bonner between the Irish posts for the 12th time. Frankie Vercaudre to take the corner. Confusion of scores by Klasner, I think it was. But a dreadful goal for Ireland to give away. First corner of the match. 13 minutes gone, an unlucky 13 for Ireland. Vercaudre's corner curled in viciously, and Klasner it was. Nico Klasner, the standard Liège striker, who put it away. The defence missed him, he got right in on top of Paddy Bonner and put it in for the opening goal for Belgium. What a dreadful goal to give away after 15 minutes. Um, complete mistake, complete mix-up in the Irish defence there. It's a dreadful goal. Belgium haven't even, even had to play for that goal. A chance to see it again and watch how they failed to spot the little fella coming in on Bonner here. Hewton missed it, Bonner missed it, and Klaas put it away. So exactly the recipe that wasn't ordered. And an attempt to repair the damage, bringing a corner at the other end. Guitace sucking on his cigar. Ten years in charge, a two-year contract signed. 
and happy I'm sure that his team has gone 1-0 up at this early stage and the roars as Kulamans takes it up Shifo available off Lawrenson's head fortunate to recover there I think that has to go down to bad defensive organisation there's no way you should let a striker in like that right in front of your goal first corner of the match and the Irish caught cold by it superbly executed by the Belgians it must be said but they were given all kinds of encouragement and took full advantage there's met handball against Lawrence And here goes McCadron again. And another corner to the Belgians. David Langen claiming that McCadron controlled the ball with his hand. And taking it down on the far side. But the referee, the Romanian, will have none of it. And the corner has been taken. And Klaassen back to Enzo Schifo. Kuhlmann's trying to get through again. Boren getting it away. Kleisters control by Klaassen and Kullerman's had it taken off his toe by Moran and Liam Brady having to come back and sort things out Shifo Fervor and Verkaudren Kulemans, Verkaudren handled that surely and the free kick has been awarded for the handball against Frankie Verkaudren who is looking particularly dangerous Ray yeah, um, Eric Gerrits who, who should have been playing right fullback uh, he, he, he is a great influence on the uh, on the Belgian defence but of all the players on the pitch including uh, Jan Kulemans I think uh, the track record of Verkautman would stand up with any player in the world. He's a hell of a good midfield player. He scores a lot of goals. The Irish coming back. Out. And Stapleton with a chance. And a great block that was by Bervaud. And it had to be because the Belgians for once were unhinged. Galvin now. Stapleton up. And the header is there. Frank Stapleton gets the equaliser. 17 minutes gone and there they are the journey is worthwhile and the Belgians unhinged by defensive frailty too because the ball when it reached Galvin had reached him as the result of a mix up Stapleton at the back the low diving header to take advantage hell of a good challenge there from John Aldridge when the cross was knocked in although he stood no chance of getting to the ball he went up with two players and did enough to put them off this is a good early cross Watch John Aldridge's challenge here. Although he wasn't going to win the ball, up he goes with the player, leaves the hole for Frank. What a fabulous header. And Frank plays the captain's part. When before, in the bad old days, we might have expected teams to take it on the chest and go down. This lot has taken it in the chin and come right back and that was certainly not what the Belgians were expecting within four minutes. The equaliser from Frank Stapleton. Schifo. And for Kautren and Schifo again. And for the fullback has come up to offer support and very nearly got there to trouble Paddy Bonner. And a free kick to Ireland. Now in the 20th minute of what's turning into an enthralling European Championship tie.
A bad goal given away, and then a good one scored to equalise. Brady's free kick. McGrath up, and Pfaff confused again. And the free kick has been awarded for the over-exuberant challenge by Kevin Moore. Pfaff complaining. Belgium have their free kick anyway. He knows he's in a battle. Lovely remark he made, said he went to Mexico feeling he was the best goalkeeper in the world. He came back knowing it. Well, he may feel he's the best goalkeeper in the world, but he's at one foot past him tonight. Offside against this man. Big man went to Lille. The close season, he scored five goals already in the French League. And that's why he's in the team here. Number 10, Philippe Desmet. And there's Big Jack and the boys. Happy, I'm sure, the way that it's sorted itself out after that lapse. Schifo, fouled by Brady. Not the first time this pair has tangled. Still plenty of noise from the Irish corner. Kleisters. And back with Demol. And Cullerman's bursting through again. One by Moran. Klassen. Schifo. Danger here. Vercalter. Well read by Lawrenson. Now does Metz. And particularly noticeable how eager the Irish are to get in on the challenge and win the ball back when it's lost. Liam Brady. Good ball to Hout. Langan offering the unselfish overlap again. Houghton couldn't thread it through to Stapleton. And now with a bit unbalanced. Cullermans has met. He's nobody in the middle though. He did this before and there was no one in the middle. He's got to go alone. And all that came from what began as a good move and then fell apart when Houghton's pass to Stapleton didn't find its target. Langen was out of position, Desmet was away, but the Belgians hadn't got anybody up to offer him support in the middle. Midway through the first half, Belgium won, Republic of Ireland won. against this Met and the big Belgian got away that time it was quite a bit away but nonetheless it was an unsettling moment because Philippe this Met had Lawrence had beaten yeah it's not often you see Mark Lawrence and get the wrong side of the forward but that time he did and uh, luckily enough he's got pace but this Met also has the pace there it was a very very dangerous moment for the Irish team here he goes again he did actually get a shot in there, and a clear shot at goal also. Paddy Bonner had got the angle right, fortunately enough, forcing him to put it past the post. Belgium's throw. This time, this met fouled by Lawrence, who was determined that he wasn't going to be caught out again. Kuhlmann trots up to the edge of the box. Klaassen there, Schifo two, and Grun in a dangerous position. Dismet is not in the middle, he's way out on the wide left. 
It's aimed towards Cullermans, won by McGrath. Grun and Schiefo. Good ball to this Met. Well, good idea to play the ball to this Met. The ball itself wasn't so good. Stapleton and Brady and Newton in some room. Stapleton made the run and Pfaff was put under pressure by his own defender there. George Groon. Kleisters. Cullermans playing very deep. They find Groon so well. But then the impetus went out of the attack. And again, this met overhitting it. Just took one wrong option there, and the impetus went out of the attack. I think Klaassen had gone offside, which was probably why they didn't involve him in the movement, give them more credit for perspicacity. Ending up with an Irish goal kick. 26 and a half minutes gone. 1-1 one, one the score. The Catherine's corner leading to Classen's goal after 13 minutes. Equalised by Frank Stapleton's diving header after 17. Aldridge, Stapleton and now Aldridge again. Newton again the early ball forward and it's come to Houghton and Langen with some room Brady Langen again McGraw with a knockback which wasn't firmly enough knocked back to reach Frank Stapleton Schiefo now for Belgium Carter does met on the run, but again it was over hit. No reason why that should be so. It's a virtually perfect night for football. There is a bit of a breeze which is favouring the Belgians, but not sufficient to make them reassess the pace they want to put on balls forward like that. And Hewton putting pressure on Schiefo, Belgium going backwards. Does Met on the run again. This time Klasner's in the middle if he can get round. The ball had gone out. And Ireland have a throw. Hooray! So far, so good. Yeah, well, no, we said a bit of that at the end, George. But, uh, I'm a little bit concerned about the Belgian midfield. They've got three classic players. They have uh, Kuhlman, who we all know about. They have Verkoutenant, who, who, who is a hell of a good player. And probably the greatest enigma in Belgian football is Enzo Schifo, uh, this guy on the ball. He's capable of turning the game, but he's also, uh, he's also a player who the Belgians don't tolerate too much. A good midfield. The referee played a good advantage there, and now there's met to Verkauteren. And there was an offside anyway, so it wouldn't have mattered. I'd be a little bit concerned for, for Paul McGrath at the present moment. Um, 
the game seems to be passing and called by in the centre of the pitch. Uh, it, it's more like Wimbledon. The ball's going forward very, very quickly, and Paul isn't contributing the way he can. Half an hour gone. Belgium one, Ireland one. How it stands. A very open and entertaining European Championship tie. McGrath. And again. Langen. And once more McGrath. And now how? Langen on the overlap. And that's looking for Oldridge. And has gone for a corner. Last man to touch was a Belgian. Uh, Belgium had the first corner of the match and scored. And those lads will be hoping that the Irish can do something similar. Irish substitutes Pete, Beglin, Whelan, Byrne and Liam O'Brien. John Byrne and Liam O'Brien. Ray Houghton's corner. Stapleton, free header at the back post. And they missed him when he got the header in for the goal, and they missed him again. Frankie van der Elst against Ray Houghton. Klaassen to Kleisters. Chifo. Fevort gone on the overlap. Still Chifo. That would have been some goal. That would have been some goal. He teased and tantalized and then let fly with what was a ferocious shot, but he just didn't have it on target. Just look again at this. Opened the space, teammates did well for him. Desmet pulling the men out of the way, and then the shot whistling past Paddy Bonner's upright. Side against Klaassen. It's mistimed the run. They're putting pressure on themselves there. Needlessly. Team not without support. Free kick awarded against Frank Stapleton. Cullerman's losing out to Galvin. Newton couldn't keep the ball in play. Belgium had the opportunity to push men forward, but they've kept three of their outfield players back. It's Desmet, the backward header. There were enough spare Irishmen there to snuff out the danger from that. Frankie van der Elst, again finding too many green shirts around, but winning a free kick. And Frankie Verkouteren will take it. looking for Kulemans.
and Ashifo. Lots of runners for him, for Port, one of them, for Cadron and another. Here's for Port now. Groon looking for it in the middle. Again, it was over hit. The clock says 10 minutes to half time, and it's still 1 1. This, of course, just the beginning of a long haul in the European Championship in a group that also includes the Scots, Bulgaria, and Luxembourg. Stefan de Mol of Van der Lecht, Jean Marie Pfaff of Bayern Munich. Meet and drink to Mark Lawrenson and now Tony Galvin. Was won by Kulemans, lay off by Klassen, Schiefo, and Kulemans again on the run from deep. Moran had seen him coming. Ball was out. And it's Ireland's throw. And no ball boy to retrieve it. Paddy Bonner's gone all the way across. Now we have a ball and we can get on with the game. Not by any means a full Hazel Stadium. Capacity reduced to 38,000. This is the first competitive international match here since that awful night, May 1985. Galvin. And Galvin fouled George Groom. And Galvin is going to get himself booked for that. Of course, this is just like the World Cup. These cautions are cumulative. And two of them, and you miss the next match. I think the way Jack is asking the players to play by knocking this ball in very early and from very deep positions is, is really putting the front men under pressure. But on the whole of this first half, the front men, Frank and, and John Aldridge, have, they've responded very, very well. I've been very impressed with both of them, winning an awful lot of ball in the air particularly. Belgium coming back. Class and beaten by Moran. It's an interesting comparison in styles, right, the way things used to be. It is, it's changed, and you can see that. It's changed considerably. Very long balls, and, and we are very good in the air. We have first-class headers of the ball, and, and, and we're making use of it. That was one of them, Frank Stapleton. Now Galvin and Liam Brady. That was very nearly danger for Belgium. Cheeky little ball to play in from Liam Brady, driven hard into the box. Aldridge went sliding in and couldn't quite connect. But I dare say if he had, Faf would not have known too much about it. And another chance to look at that. Liam Brady 
drilling it into the box. Holdridge came in, Stapleton too, but just couldn't connect. Galvin for Brady. He got that out well. Stapleton and Aldridge again taking up station in the middle. Galvin's cross. Stapleton up. Didn't get the clean header at it. In Belgium with a goal kick. Five minutes to half time. One all the score. And plenty to encourage them to shout even louder. That banner in the bottom, you may just have caught sight of, proudly bearing the name of Blessington. Cut out by Hugh. been awarded to Belgium. And where Schifo goes, Brady is never too far away. And then Schifo taking a bit of retribution from Tony Galvin and becoming the second player to get his name noted by the referee. Galvin, of course, moments ago, who had fouled Grün and good books. Jan Igna from Romania taking the name of Enzo Schifo. Mick Byrne, the Irish physio, departs the scene. Tony Galvin fit to resume. Schifo's name in the referee's book. Well there. Galvin just couldn't get in to fire the shot. And that's meant for Houghton. And Frankie van der Els couldn't keep it in play. And it's a corner to Ireland. A little under three minutes to the break. I don't think the Belgian defence are used to having the ball played in so early from such uh, long range. Uh, you can obviously see that uh, Dave Langan and, and in particular and uh, Galvin have been told to knock that ball in very early. Brady's corner, breaking to McGrath. And Galvin again, Houghton now. Away by for Fort. Houghton, no offside here. It's come to Houghton again. Aldridge in the middle. This is Brady. In fact, several in the middle now. One of them, John Aldridge, still there. Couldn't make the header count. And Cullermans to lead the counter attack. There's Met with Lawrence going with him. Klassen in the middle. Schifo arriving. And Klassen goes up. And Houghton gets the touch. Or did he? Belgium want the corner. And the referee is giving it. Yes, I think that's fair enough. Rather wasted by McCarthy. Belgium backpedaling again. Grün into the final minute of the first half 1-1 one, one the score Christ is coming forward and now Schifo and the referee not impressed by that particular fall seeing no foul challenge Houghton on the ball for Ireland Langen and Chase Schifo still down on the turf And McCarthy to Dismet. Schifo is up. Langen wins it back. 
Aldridge has gone offside, free kick to Belgium as Shipo returns to an onside position. Well, he would have loved to wait before attention in the dressing room if he's that badly hurt. And in fact, a little before time, Jan Igna of Romania blows the whistle and brings to an end a highly satisfactory first half, not for this man, Gites, the manager of the Belgian team, but certainly from an Irish point of view. Verkaitren with the first corner of the game, giving class the chance to unhinge the Irish defence, 1-0 to Belgium, and then four minutes later, Frank Stapleton making the tricolours wave with an equaliser from a diving header. Half-time score then in the Hazel Stadium in Brussels, Belgium 1, Republic of Ireland 1. We'll take a break and be back with more. You're welcome back. Guy Taste, the Belgian manager, with effective pause in the dressing room. He hasn't made any changes in his lineup at half time, nor indeed has Jack Charlton. And the sides are ready to begin the second half. Goal apiece. And certainly in the stadium, a very interesting and entertaining first 45 minutes we've had. And let's hope for good things from the second half. Ireland playing left to right then in the second half. For the first goal kick of the half. Jean-Marie Pfaff. Or else seemed reluctant to come for that. Cleared in the end by Kleisters. And Cullermans with room, and every time Cullermans gets on the ball, there's a buzz around the crowd. Now it is met. Knocked away by Mormon, not precisely where he wanted to put it, but knocked away nonetheless. Is met, cleared by Lawrence. Aldridge chasing. This is Kleisler's. Demo. And there's Matt beating Brady, but not Kevin Moore. and have a look sharp it's there and it's brought Belgium a corner and let's think back to the first half of Frankie Vercaldrin trotting over to the right hand corner and swinging one in Chris Hewton found wanting on the near post on that occasion Vercaldrin may well be tempted to put it right back in there indeed he does Stapleton getting it away Shifo. And now Kleisters. Well done by Hugh. Advantage played. And now Demol. It's the sweeper pushed up. Fairport. Returned Lang and well there. And that was anybody's ball. And perhaps Carson should have made more of it. And for that, I should think we should be thankful. Yeah, I, I, I think we were a little bit fortunate there, but uh, the referee gave a free kick for dangerous play. David Langham was a little bit exposed there by, by, by number five. 
Uh, Patrick Devlin, here he goes. He turns Davey both ways. That's bad defending on Dave's part. He gets in a good cross. That was dangerous play. Yeah, it looked like dangerous play to me, and he has taken the free kick. So that incident passes, and it stays 1-1. And the Belgian crowd finding its voice. Chipo. Robbed by Brady and Aldridge on side and a chance to run a goal. Faf off his line. And now Houghton. And coming to Brady. And they over-elaborated really and in the end uh, Liam Brady had one of those shots. Yeah, it was, I thought John Aldridge was going to go early for Frank Stapleton there on the far post because Frank had pulled off. Uh, again, this, this Belgian defence don't really seem to be able to cope with the Irish attack. I think Frank, uh, Frank Stapleton and John Aldridge are enjoying themselves out there tonight. They're really seeing an awful lot of the ball. Well, an interesting uh, compliment paid to the Irish team by Rick de Sadler, the veteran Belgian commentator, sitting alongside us and chatting at half-time and saying that it's 20 matches or so since Belgium lost here in the Hazen Stadium. They really haven't come up against opposition of this quality in that time. And he said that totally unprovoked and clearly meant it. But now something on here, perhaps Klassen. Did he handle the ball? It's broken to Schifo. For Carteron, and is met offside. The Irish getting quickly on with it. Brady. Before it didn't cut that out, and now Langen, Stapleton further forward, Aldridge wants it in the middle. And Galvin, not underneath it a little, but again, the Belgian defence pulled this way and that, and encouraging signs. And there were two spare men on the far side. Galvin just got underneath it. Five minutes of the second half gone and an encouraging start to the half. crowd beginning to get behind the Belgians now. Klassen. This method continued his run but not into that position. And no trouble in the end of the Irish defence. Something of a rugby tackle from Leo Kleisters. Frank Stapleton on the receiving end. And Ireland with a free kick. gone for a goal kick quite how he uh, put that decision out of what appeared to be a rough deflection I'm not too sure however Jan Igna in control and Belgium back in possession Kleisters again this met running more and done with him and now Galvin bundled out of it by Groot. He was looking a bit for that Tony Galvin. These fellas know each other of old. They were in direct opposition in the UEFA Cup final of 1984. Groot for Anderlecht and Galvin for Tottenham Hotspur. Tottenham went on to win that two-legged final. Perhaps an omen there for the men in green tonight. Stapleton in behind them all. And Galvin to take the throw. Ball out. Boots of derision from around the Hazel Stadium. 
the Lions went right on the line and followed its path so that it had crossed the line in flight. Ray Houghton for Liam Brady. Knocked off the ball by Kreisgers. And Faf not looking too happy about that. The Carter and Kleister's the two-man wall. Brady. And Aldridge, offside. Aldridge had just got offside as the header came in. And Belgium breathe again. by Hewton, now Galvin. Fortunate ricochet. Houghton for Brady. And the Belgians taking a leaf out of the Irish book and really hustling in on their men. Straight down Shifo's throat. Now Perfort. and mistiming that clearance. Brady penalised. Somewhat harshly I felt too, however. Free kick to Belgium. That's for Kaudner, number six. And he's called up Groot, who's now gone into the box. Perfort, the Carteret, and another teasing cross. He really can't put them in there and hang them up just where it causes most difficulty to the Irish defence. Brady kept it in play well. But now Verbort for Belgium. Frankie van der Elst and Enzo Schifo. Verbort. Poor ball. Lots of room for Chris Hewton now. Brady was trying to find him again. Belgium a three on three. Cullermans for Desmet. Klassen in the middle. And Desmet. Deprived by Bonner. And that was a very important save. That was a hell of a good save by Packy Bonner. But uh, it's one of the dangers that's happening here. Paul McGrath isn't quite sure if he's anchor man or if he's going to go uh, go forward. And he's getting caught between the two. That time he broke forward. And Jan Kuhlman just stayed on the halfway line. He was the man who set it up from there. Uh, I think Paul should... Here we go again. A good ball through. But Cullerman hadn't gone back with Paul McGrath. From here, Packy's done really well. Kevin Slip, one against one. Yeah. I think the forward would be asking questions of himself there. It was a definite chance, an open, a, a, a very, very good chance for Belgium. And that was Desmet, five goals already for Lille in France this season. I just note Jack Charlton has sent Ronnie Whelan off the bench to warm up. We've gone uh, 13 minutes into the second half. 1-1 one, one it stays. Here's Bismet again. And handball awarded. Cullermans was claiming as soon as the ball was won. And this, it hardly needs repeating, is a dreadful position to give away a free kick. Whelan has gone back on the bench 
many thoughts of substitution clearly premature let's look at that again Moran went in and did he have well it seemed to bounce off onto Chris Hughton's feet but Cullermans was claiming and the referee was happy to grant the request he made so now it's all hands to the pump and 11 Irishmen inside the penalty area Shifo, Kulamans and Verkaitren out of picture Verkaitren, good save again Packy Bonner earning his corn with two good saves in quick succession saw it quite late, it fizzed over the wall, but he got down well behind it. Now, Klaassen, the Kadron lost his footing. Bevort, this time Langen in first. And he very nearly got caught between two stools there but the shin pads did the business now Verford on Langen again corner tense times in the Irish defence quarter of an hour of the second half gone 1-1 it remains for Cauteron's corner Timol Kulamans Deflected again. Another corner to Belgium. An interesting departure. They must feel they have exhausted the possibilities of the near post. They've relieved a cauldron of corner kicking duties and have given it to Demet. Cleared by Hewton. There's an offside flag. The referee deciding to blow the whistle. Back with Langen. And Aldridge fairly thumped from behind by Philippe, by Stefan de Mol rather. Brady here with five men at whom to aim. One of them McGrath, Houghton beaten by Kleisters, and now Shifo and Groon. Oh, Houghton may have been caught, but Moran was going to take no chances. I think that uh, Liam Brady is have, certainly having one of his better games tonight. We've got uh, Tony Galvin wide on the left. We've also got uh, Ray Houghton wide on the right. Paul and Liam in the middle. Liam is the only player there who's capable of switching the play. And he's done this remarkably well at times. I think uh, certainly one of his better internationals in the last couple of years. Well, this is Stapleton with Houghton going through the middle. Now Brady's arrived in the centre circle. They had to hold out until the support came. And Brady, trying to go it alone. Occasions like that, I often feel players take the responsibility on and try the shot and would be full of congratulations if it succeeded. He just didn't get hold of it correctly. But they're still taking the game to the Belgians when they get the opportunity. There's no sitting on a 1-1 on a scoreline and hoping for the draw. Republic of Ireland have never beaten Belgium in a competitive match. Two draws and one defeat that defeat coming here five years ago in controversial circumstances mistake by Bergort out and chasing 
but back with Trump. being forced backwards not something that the whole fans will find terribly encouraging slipped by Lawrenson Klassen the Carteran unable to get past Langen this time there was no Belgian there now Schifo for Carteran was offside for Catherine winning his 55th cap tonight a man of vast experience in his debut against Northern Ireland in the World Cup in 1977 Frankie van der Elst and how often do you see that strikers battling and hurrying away it didn't win the throw just then but there's no quarter of the field in which the Belgians can feel safe to dwell on the ball. The Irish attitude and spirit, first class. Hey. 20 minutes of the second half gone. It's still at 1-1. One -one. It stands. I think we have Paggy Bonner to thank for that. Two key saves from Desmet and from Vakadran. Space of a minute, not so long ago, keeping the scores level. Now Brady. Just too close to Faf. Cullimans. Kleisters. Demol. And Vakadran. McGrath, this was the header moments ago, the defensive header, and noticeable that he's dropped back into a more withdrawn role in front of the back four. It's class in the Moran corner. Nico Klassen might have been looking for something else there. Good tackle by Kevin Moran there, because one mistake there and the referee could have been given a penalty. It was an excellent tackle. Catherine again. Galvin got it away. It's now with Aldridge. Stapleton. Demol. Desmet. And the Catherine. And the miss of the night, surely. Demol, the defender, got up and had a free shot and goal the Irish concentration lapsed and he made such a hash of it the Irish defence were caught very square here this was the ball that found them out in behind Chris Hewton always struggling I thought De Maul should have gone with, it, with his head I thought he had chances to head that ball cut it completely wrong and so midway through the second half, one quarter of the match remaining, it's Belgium 1, Republic of Ireland 1. See it again, Hewton was caught stranded there, and De Maul was on his own. He chose to let it drop and flash the left foot at it. I think had that been Frank Stapleton or John Aldridge, it would have been a header in there, and, and a goal.
This is Leo Kreisner's. Fort and Klassen on the run and interesting it was McGrath who saw him coming and got back and perhaps he sorted out his role a bit more now he's certainly he's, he's sitting back further uh, the longer the game goes on the further back he's going so it's very important that Liam Brady continues to, to, to exercise his influence on him free header that's a great goal a superb goal by Enzo Schifo And again, the Irish found out from the corner kick. Put right into the spot where Bonner couldn't reach. Enzo Schifo, the enigma of Belgian football. For Kaidman, he saw what was on here. He took the corner quickly. And Schifo came in late, got underneath it. And, well, maybe Paddy Bonner's dive was a little swan-like. But certainly, that was quick thinking on Verkaitren's part, and twice he has unhinged the Irish defence. It was also bad play. It was also bad play by the Irish defence, because he got a free header. You can see there wasn't a player within five yards of it. Having said that, that's one of the nicest headers I've seen in many, many years. He had one place to score, and he put it there. 2-1 then, and 20 minutes to go. And this is where the real questions will be asked of the Irishman. Brady. And McGrath. Knocked away by DeMault. And still the cheroot being sucked. Still the concentration intense. Key taste must know. But at this stage in the game, a goal is going to be very difficult for the Irish to retrieve. Again, Ronnie Whelan leaves the bench. This time there's a rather more purposeful look about the warm-up than there was the last occasion. Now trotting up and down the running track played host to some of the world's greatest athletes last Friday night. Fairport. Now Cartman offside. A respite and a chance to mount another attack. Hewton. Brady's gone on a good forward run. Hewton didn't spot him. It's now Coleman. And Lawrence had just nudged Klassen at the precise moment in which he was trying to take off on his run. The referee was right there to spot it. Belgium with a free kick. A disappointing attendance for this. They were expecting something near the 28, the 38,000 capacity. Confirmed figures just in 22,212. So after filling all the squares of Brussels to welcome home the World Cup heroes, the fans have proved less than enthusiastic about the opening of this European Championship campaign. 22,212 have paid in to see this. I think those who stayed away have missed a fair old contest. of which there are now a little over 17 minutes remaining. 2-1 to Belgium.
Michael Stapleton will run all night, even in chase of hopeless causes like that one. And even at this stage, the Belgians will extract every last second from the manoeuvre, putting the ball back to Patrick Vervoort so that he can take the throw. Well, there's Matt Poo Langen. Now Shifo. And Verkauter again, straying offside. Else put pressure on Pap. John Aldridge was not that far away. And the showman takes over. Very gregarious individuals, Jean Marie Pap. Full of chat and prepared to talk to anybody who'll talk to him. Howden. Brady, Shifo closing. Brady got that out well, but then Kleister's depriving Aldridge. McGrath for Stapleton. Aldridge still in the middle. Houghton two. And off of a Cartman for the throw. Quarter of an hour of the match remaining. 2-1 to Belgium. And now Brady with some room. It's Stapleton and Aldridge, together the twin threats. It was Aldridge he looked for. And deprived by a Belgian head, a corner is what results. Ray Houghton has gone to take it. Stapleton on the near post. Aldridge in close attendance. And Moran has gone up to join the band. That's a goal kick. The linesman was in line. And the minutes drift away. 13 and a half to go. 2 1 to Belgium. Shifo's exquisite header. The difference now between the sides. Brady, Galvin losing out to Kleisters, Chris Hewton, foul throw, Lawrence and doing the sensible thing. Houghton coming away from Fevort. And then McGrath beating Van der Elst. And Fevort back to cover. Pillemans, this is Langen. And Galvin couldn't keep it in play. They'll happily do this all night. Well, for the third time, Ronnie Whelan has left the bench. Perhaps a fresh pair of legs would be 
in order. Yeah, I think Ronnie Whelan will be on now. Um, I'm not sure who for. He may take off Paul McGrath. I'm not quite sure. But uh, we do need an extra pair of legs, certainly, to go forward. I think now we've got to take the chances. Jan Kuhlman, basically, has come to a stop. Uh, he's only playing in our half field. As a midfield player, that's got to be Ron. So I think we've got to take the chance and, uh, and try and use the space that he's leaving. Paul well, Whelan. The large number 13 on his back now ready to join the play, but here's Klassen! And that was an important deflection, it seemed to me. But the referee didn't see the deflection, nor did the linesman. So fortunate enough to have a goal kick when a corner seemed the more obvious outcome. And now it's a throw. And now a chance for Whelan to go on, Ronnie Whelan, and he's going to take off Tony Galvin. Well, there's a little over 10 minutes to go, 10 minutes in which Tony Galvin's place can be filled by Ronnie Whelan. So let's hope he gets himself an early birthday present. He'll be 25 next Tuesday. The goal here would do nicely. Brady and Faf taking no chances as McGrath came in and that's a throw Brady not a great ball by Chris Houghton and Lawrence had got in but Houghton was the width of a street offside, and now we're going to see Jim Beglin come on. So, the two holiday makers who chose holidays rather than the tour to Iceland and who paid for that with their places in the starting lineup are both going to end the match. But here goes Gru, Hewton in on him, and that's a corner. Nine minutes to go. 2-1 Belgium lead. And for Catherine, who has been the undoing of Ireland twice, foiled by Frank Stapleton. And now that substitution can be made. McBurn out. To call home Chris Hewton. But despite all the signals, no opportunity to make the substitution, and now they can. Eight minutes to go. Jim Beglin will go on when Chris Hewton has left the fray. Chris, who's lost his place in the Tottenham team, fortunate enough to be in the starting lineup here. And now replaced with eight minutes to go by Jim Beglin. The two Liverpool men are on. I think we can see, expect to see at least Jim Beglin back in the starting lineup when the Scots come to town. Five weeks tonight. Stapleton fouling his man, said the referee. And the Belgians, having taken the lead, have now been able to take the pace out of the game. And the goal really came at a, the worst possible time with the legs beginning to tire and now having gone behind the cause seeming ever more hopeless. But here's one man who won't let it die, Davy Langen, now Ray Houghton and Liam Brady. Beglin, Whelan is up ahead, and on the ball, Beglin on the overlap, and Aldridge and Stapleton there, and that was so important, an interception by De Maul. they don't like the high cross, the Belgians, and Jim Beglin found a good one to test them, now Brady,
During the World Cup, I know the Belgians were the team that uh, they counter-attacked everybody. They broke forward and they scored all their goals on the counter-attack. Tonight, they've had to come and win the game. It's uh, amazing to see that it's two dead ball situations which have cost Ireland the game. Well, Ray, perhaps you're being premature. We'll hope you're being premature, but it's looking that way now with, what, just six minutes to go, 2-1 down. And a free kick given away. I suppose the hopeful thing is there's a Belgian on the ground, which is why we won't be able to start. Schifo, or is it Klassen has gone down. Klassen's on the deck. Schifo there, standing, preparing to take the free kick. I suppose it's encouraging that at least dead ball mistakes can be worked on on the training ground. Yeah, but uh, they can happen in any game. And they happen too often. Schifo. Over the top and away. The scoreboard, the Belgian flag in front, telling the story. Five minutes and 16 seconds to go. Turn off the ball. Back they go again. This is this met. Klaassen. And Langen back to snuff out the danger. Aldridge trying to get in there. It's back. What did they say? Command. Three and a half minutes to go, 2-1 to Belgium. Schifo. And De Mol. And played for Kulemans. Kevin Moran blocked his way through. Brady to lead the counter-attack. Stapleton. Beglin. Whelan's gone up to the edge of the box. And that's Whelan. And McGrath got up. And now Stapleton. And McGrath. Couldn't find a way through. The Cardwin, the Belgian hero. Taken by Moran. And Rand Gruen. Kleisters has come. Goal kick. Just two and a half minutes to go now. And the bright beginnings evaporating in the clouds of another defeat. But plenty of encouraging signs in that performance. The mistakes apart. Yes, there has been, George. I think... Uh the likes of David Langan, who, despite his limitations, uh, continues to give 1,000% for Ireland. And he's, he's been very effective, particularly going forward tonight. Uh, Liam Brady has had one of his better games tonight. Ray Houghton has done well, and the front players. But I must have serious reservations about playing Paul McGrath in the middle of the park. I know he's not happy there. He looks unhappy there. And we're not, we're not getting the best from, from one of our better quality players. And I wonder they're smiling. With the height of irony, too, that one of the great defenders of English football, Jack Charlton, in his first competitive match in charge of the team, should see them fall to uh, defensive mistakes. I'm sure he'll make the point well enough. 
90 seconds to go. And Belgium cushioned by that goal by Schifo, 20 minutes from the end. And the points almost within their grasp. No offside here, Stapleton going in on Pfaff and pulled down, surely, yes! yes. Penalty kick! That was a very, very good move, given the time and of the stage of the game. Yes, it was excellent. Within 70 seconds of the end of it, and they kept the shape, they didn't get caught offside. Here's the through ball from Jimmy Begland. The defenders had stayed back, number seven had stayed back. He was the one. From there, Faf was dreadful. He called himself the world's best goalkeeper. He went to Mexico, and on his way to Mexico, he said, I believe I'm the world's best goalkeeper. On his return from Mexico, he said, I know I'm the world's best goalkeeper. I question it, certainly after that. So now, Liam Brady, who missed the penalty for Arsenal in the Cup Winners' Cup final here in 1980. The penalty shootout against Valencia. Liam, don't do it this time. 2-2. Two -two. The point is saved. Well deserved, and I'm delighted for Liam Brady that he's answered the physics that he's had. He's had a marvellous game tonight. It was a first-class performance. First-class performance all the way around. And we've got something we really deserve to be here. And with almost the last kick of the game, as we move now into injury time, Liam Brady brings out the flags, and 2-2 is the score, and the match is over, and a remarkable night in the Hazel Stadium in Brussels ends in a chorus of boos from the Belgians, but a remarkable performance.